One morning, my wife woke me up. I just heard this voice. It's Sunday morning, 7 a.m., midnight, right? And I'm in deep communion with the pillow. The pillow is here. I heard this voice. Dan, what? Dan, Dan, what? Wake up. What is it? The, the rabbit. <laughs> no, listen, the rabbit is dead. <laughs> no, really, he is. Listen, he has no head. <laughs> I had to get up. I went into the garden, there was this perfect rabbit. Perfect. Not a hair out of place, not a drop of blood, not a blade of grass moved. <laughs> no head. <laughs> Nothing. And a five layer modernist fox shit right beside him. <laughs> Might as well have had a card in the top saying, that's how I do, I'll see you later. <laughs> it was amazing, the threat. And so then we had to get a dog. They wanted to get a dog. They should do dog, dog, dog. No, 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 I was saying. Now, of course, we have a dog. Of course we do, because I'm the father. P this is, people don't listen to fathers. That's the truth, because they don't, Fathers are not considered people <laughs> in families. They're not. A big force, yes. An elemental force even, sure. But not a person. Look at the Christmas presents fathers get. Nobody knows who this guy is. That's why they come up to him. That's why they come up to him and they go, here you go. We got you, it's uh, what is it? It's a woolly penguin. You squeeze it, it says fucking Dutch. You might like it. <laughs> they don't know who he is. It's a giant clog, ma clog made out of lunch meats from all over the world. You get into it, it plays the Austrian national anthem. I don't know, we thought it might be your thing. <laughs> Do you know who the guy is? So of course we have a dog. Now I didn't want to be here standing talking about my fucking dog either, okay? That was never the plan for me. I didn't want a dog. I didn't want to stand up here and talk about it. You know, I remember passing these guys in, in the hills around where we live. These guys standing there in their barber jackets with some huge animal on a lead taking a shit in the weeds. And they would look at you with this face as if to go, what can you do, eh? Well, you could not look around for excuses for giving up on your dreams. You fucking loser. That's what you could do. <laughs> I used to think that. I didn't say it. Now I don't think it. I just say, morning Bob, holding the fucking dog. <laughs> so, anyway, so we're gonna get this pop from this friend of mine. And um, he wanted to meet in this coffee shop place. Now, near, near where he lives. So I went and um, it was one of these places and they've popped up everywhere. They are everywhere now. London's full of them. And you know what I'm talking about, they're really cool. And this strip back wood and just bare brick, no real furniture, just, you know, coffee sacks. It's too cool for furniture, just coffee sacks and half of an old surfboard sign from the 1950s, something like that. I, it's very intimidating if you're of a certain age. I walked in, I was the only person who did not have an Edwardian cricketer's beard. <laughs> very excluded, I felt. And, Everybody has a lot of tattoos. Tattoos used to be an anchor or a girl or a tiger. Now there's the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> and it's becoming Lord of the Rings. It doesn't stop. It just goes wrap around the whole piercings everywhere. It looked like somebody had gone by the building and just gone <laughs> And a lot of very earnest conversations. Mm, mm, yeah, Hugo, we should. We should open a cauliflower bar. We fucking should. <laughs> yeah, brilliant idea. A ukulele patio. That's a fucking great idea, Miles. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's crowdsource that shit. <laughs> People having those conversations, the tattoos, the piercings, one man with an actual javelin through his chest, nodding in the corner. And <laughs> so I'm very intimidated. I go up to the chief beard in front of his Harley Davidson coffee machine. There's too many coffees. There's too many different types of coffee. Oh, Frutage de tado? I don't want that. I said, Cottagino, just give me a cup of coffee, please. I said, did you put two shots in the coffee here? He goes, yeah, like it insulted generations of his family. <laughs> I said, well, can I get it in a slightly bigger cup, please? Thank you. And he went, yeah, you could. And he didn't move. I thought maybe this is a new thing too. So I just stood there looking at him. He didn't move, thinking. Make it so. 
I know you're resentful of me and everything because you have a degree in marine accountancy or whatever it is. <laughs> and you have to pull coffee for a living, but that's the way it happens sometimes. <laughs> Just, please, can you do this? What happens next? <laughs> and he's staring at me and he said, you could, but you're gonna lose the umaminess of the single origin bean. <laughs> that's what the man said, okay? I said, okay, but you can still do it, right? It's pretty neutral, very mature, isn't it mature? <laughs> then he said, yeah, but it'll get radially diffused on the camber of the cup. <laughs> I don't know what I said then. <laughs> because we were on the street all of a sudden. And <laughs> he was saying some stuff about coffee, I was making some speculations about him and his place in the universe and in what possible continuum he might get laid. And <laughs> it ended with me walking away and him shouting after me, enjoy your attitude problem, enjoy your life. So I was really, really mad, okay? I was furious mainly at myself for losing my temper. So I go to my friend's house and my friend is annoying at the best of times. One, and he could, didn't understand the situation at all. He's one of these people, okay, he's always keeping up with cool stuff and telling me what I should watch and read and what I should be doing and all, you know. Have you seen the new Scandinavian crime series? I haven't, no. It's brilliant. Nisplag and Naskin, knack knack ya ga ha <laughs> It's Finnish, it translates as hut. It's about these... <laughs> it's about these three detective fishermen who get trapped in the hut over the winter. They're all in love with each other. One of them goes deaf because it's so cold. The other one gets fat because he has a lot of bait hidden in the hood of his parka. The other one is narcoleptic and insomniac. He spends the whole time just doing this. <laughs> it lasts for a year and a half. You have to see it in the original finish, otherwise you lose all the nuaganacht, which is finished for nuance. And <clears throat> so there's all that, right? And he didn't understand the coffee situation. He was just following me around going, how can you argue with the coffee guy? Hi, can I get coffee? How can you have an argument? I didn't want to talk to him. I just wanted to sit down. I wanted to sit down, and I tried to sit down on this woolly chair, but it shat on me. <laughs> and then he came running over, oh, you found the dog, you found the dog. Because he didn't have a proper dog. You know, he had one of these modern fucking fradoo doodle schnoodle voodle goodle dogs. <laughs> what happened to dogs? The dogs, you know, dogs, Labradors. I grew up with those classic dogs. Labradors, it's a human being in dog form. It, you know what it is, it's walking around going, have you seen my glasses? I don't know where they are, I can't find it. Where's, where, you, where is it? I'm sorry. Where's the, have you got the crossword? And the, even if they're annoying, you can recognize them. You know, a spaniel, you know, it's like some drunk auntie at a party, one whose ears keep going into their mouth and they have to spit them out. I'm a Spaniel, I'm a Spaniel, I've always been a Spaniel. <laughs> or you think, Bernard, they're ludicrous looking, but you know what they are, okay? They're that, that dog, the one where you go up the mountain because you're a dick. <laughs> All those people doing those sports, the ridiculous sports, calling you in the middle of the night in January, hi, I'm stuck up the mountain, it didn't go well. <laughs> the mountain at night in January, how does it go right? <laughs> What are you doing? We're having a curry. Go away. Click. There. All of those people doing those sports, fly diving and hole finding, they're responsible for their own actions, okay? If you want a sense of danger, stop wasting everybody's time, okay? Blindfold yourself and walk around your flat, have a friend hit you with a stick. <laughs> but... If you go... If you go up the mountain, you know the dog, it's the dog that comes over and drinks brandy watching you die. It's that dog. <laughs> but he didn't have a proper dog. He didn't have a proper one. He had one of these, these dogs. You don't know what they are. It looks like a car wash with teeth. You don't know what it is. <laughs> and he came running over. He said, you found him. That's our schnapper, Daniel. He's on his knees tickling the dog. He's called Mr. Beans. Isn't he adorable? We called him Mr. Beans because the first thing he did when he came in the apartment was he jumped up on that table over there and he ate a plate of beans. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> I said, um, I, I, I also like beans. <laughs> My name is not Mr. Beans. <laughs> My name is Mr. Shit Shoes because I have shit on my shoes. When you're quite finished giving Mr. Beans a hand job or whatever you're doing there, 
I would like a towel or a shovel or something, okay? Thank you very much.